Hi there, Starving Photographer here, and today I'm going to walk you through how I might go about editing one of my pictures. Here is an image from Alaska. It's a full disclosure, I am one of the Sony Alpha Collective members, and many of the images I share with you are taken on a Sony system. So here is an image in its absolute raw format. It has not been edited in any way, uh, and it has a very bland, washed out appearance. Yet, if we examine the histograms, all the data is still available, all the way from the deep shadows to the very bright areas in the highlights. Even though some areas may look washed out on the monitor, uh, we know that data is still present. And that's one of the things I want to point out to you before we get started is really keep an eye on your histogram to make sure you have no significant clipping, particularly in the very bright or very dark areas. So here we have a very nice histogram. At this point, I'm going to try to bring out some of the detail preliminarily in Lightroom before I go and do any more editing. Let me talk to you about my approach to editing. Before I get started, I actually have uh, an idea in my mind's eye about what I want the final image to look like. Here, I definitely want to bring out more detail on the highlights bring out a little bit more pop in these colors over here. This is during the fall season, so there are some nice yellows and reds and greens over here. And I wanna do something a little different with the sky. I like the clouds the way they are, but they're very static. I want to convey a sense of motion, and eventually I'm going to take this image into Photoshop, mask out the sky, and blur it uh, such that it looks like there's motion, like a long exposure type of image. And I think it's going to give it a much more dynamic appearance. So I already am thinking about how I want this final image to look like before I go about processing it. And I think that's a very key thing to realize uh, is that you don't want to get surprised at the end by what your final image looks like. You want to have an idea of what you want it to be and then go about doing it. There are many tools in Lightroom and Photoshop that will let you achieve your vision. And there's no one way of doing things. This is just the way that I'm going to show you how I approach it. And hopefully you'll find it helpful. So let's get started. So I'm going to go to the develop module. And I'm going to bring back the highlights a little bit. And then I'm going to bring back the whites. The highlights and whites work in tandem to decrease the very bright areas. Okay, that looks pretty good. And one of my other videos I mentioned that the highlights here affect more global areas of brightness as opposed to the highlights in the curve, tone curve section. And I'm gonna play with that just a little bit to actually increase the highlights just to give it a little bit more pop. I think I'm pretty happy with the dark and bright areas. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of vibrancy. So the difference between vibrancy and saturation. Vibrancy increases the saturation in colors that are not yet completely saturated as opposed to saturation which has a global effect on the saturation and increases the saturation even in colors that have already been saturated. So I tend to work with vibrancy a little bit more than the saturation. And here I go, and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna warm up the image just a little bit because it's a little bit too cool. So I'm gonna increase the temperature just a tad. Good, that's a very a slight difference, but enough where it makes a difference to me uh, the what I'm looking at it. And finally, as a Last step, I'm going to play around with the dehaze tool. Remember the dehaze tool is sort of a way of getting rid of some of the low contrast areas. And you have to be careful with this tool because this will introduce a little bit of coolness to your image. So if your white balance isn't great to begin with, you may have to adjust that after you do the dehaze tool. So let's see how this works in this image. You notice the blue of the sky is a little blue. I actually like that effect. And the image itself looks much crisper little micro contrast has been added. So, so far, I think I'm happy with the overall look of this image. So here's a before, just to give you intermediate steps, and here is the after. So I'm pretty happy with the way things are looking right now. I'm now going to take this image into Photoshop and edit it a little bit more, such that I want to convey more dynamic movement in the clouds. So I'm going to right click, and say edit in Photoshop. And here is the image in Photoshop. I'm gonna make it fit to screen, so it's a little bigger. The game plan at this point is to convey a sense of motion in the clouds by 
stretching it out and giving it a long exposure type of appearance. And this is how I do it. Here's the background. I'm going to duplicate the background by dragging it here to that little icon. Now that we have duplicated the two layers, I'm going to blur the top layer and then mask out the regions that I'm interested in from the bottom such that you have sharp foreground and, and mountains and a blurred out long exposure effect on the sky. So let me show you how I do that. I'm going to click on the background copy. I'm going to go to filter, blur, and not Gaussian blur or regular blur or even motion blur, but we're going to choose radial blur. And that's the magic right here is the radial blur tool. When the radial blur tool menu comes up, make sure you choose the zoom feature and not the spin. The spin causes a circular motion and the zoom causes a linear motion. And this sort of, as you can see, it approximates the movement of the clouds. You can have it moving from uh, left to right, right to left, but I'm going to keep it sort of center-ish. And you want the horizon, this is the horizon, to approximate about the level of where the top of your mountains are. So this is pretty good, close enough. I'm not going to worry too much about it. And as far as the quality goes, uh, the default is, I think, good. I typically keep it at best, especially for those big files that the A7R2 can generate. This is a 42 megapixel image. It's a gorgeous file, but it also is very huge. And if you choose the best rendering method, it takes a little longer, but it's worth it, trust me. And as far as the amount, you could choose whatever value you like. Uh, the larger the number, the more blurry the clouds will look. And I typically keep the value between 10 and 20, depending on the effect I'm trying to go for. So this is pretty good as far as the parameters go. And now I'm gonna hit okay. And here we are. We can see that it has created a motion effect centered somewhere over here. And you can see the nice motion in the sky. Of course, the foreground and the rocks look terrible, but we're not worried about right now. We're gonna worry about how to take this sky and put it in our original image here that didn't have any motion. And it's relatively simple. So I'm gonna go back to our background image and I'm going to duplicate it again by dragging it down here. And I'm gonna take that second copy and move it on the top. I like to have a background layer that's completely unaffected by the Photoshop changes I'm making just because I want that added assurance of having something that's completely unadulterated in case I have to mask any part of that in. But let's go back to our background copy two layer and I'm going to now mask out the sky. So I'm gonna choose this uh, mask tool right here and I'm just gonna brush over the sky like this. It does a great job of choosing the edges because the edges are very, very well defined. You're basically looking at jagged edges against a smooth background, so it's not a hard process for the processor or the software to figure out. So at this point, I'm going to uh, select the inverse. So that's Shift, Command, I, and then hit this mask. And then now you notice the sky has been replaced, but if I take this to 100%, the edges don't look that great. And how do we fix that? It's a very, very simple fix. Let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna go back to our fit to screen view, command zero. I'm going to select the background copy layer. And if you remember, that's the layer that has the uh, zoom effect sky on it. So I'm gonna select that, go up to select, select all. And so just that layer is now selected. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that layer and stretch it out a little bit so the top of the mountains get hidden behind the sharp mountains of the layer above it. And it's actually easier to show you than to explain it. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to say edit, free transform. And I'm just gonna drag this handle down. If I hold the shift key down, it makes a nice symmetric increase in there just a little bit such that now the bad part or the blurry part of the mountains are hidden behind the part of the mountains that are masked out in the sharp image. So let's accept the changes and look at it 100% at the edges. And here we go. Beautiful edges. Looks great. Looks great. I do notice one part which looks a little funny over here, but that's okay, that's very easy to fix. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
drag my sky down a little bit more. Edit, free transform, and bring it down just a little bit more. And it's okay to distort the sky as much as possible because it's a sky, it's meant to be distorted, it's meant to be blurry. There's no real shape to it, so I'm not worried about it looking funny. Accept the changes again, and let's re-examine it at 100%. Looks great. Looks really, really good. And there you go. Now we have this great long exposure look to the sky and uh, a beautiful color and light to the foreground. Flatten everything. Layers flatten. I'm going to deselect it. And here's the final image and I can now save it and take it back into Lightroom for further minor edits. So I'm going to say File, Save. And let's go back to Lightroom. And here it is. Here's the before image, and here's the after image with the sky put in. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much.